Hey, Mr. Allen, this is David Murphy in period three, period three, and here is my family immigration project. Hey, Mr. Allen, this is my dad, and he's here, the person I'm interviewing for my project, so I guess we'll start. So, dad, so the Murphy people coming from Ireland, when about did they come to America, and why, and like where did they, you think they first landed? Sure. Uh, circa 1870s, the early 1870s, they came from a place called County Cork, Ireland. I'm quite sure they came on a sailing ship because that's all there was back then. And uh, their point of entry, landing, I really cannot say for sure. Likely New York City. Uh, and then um, a train ride to, uh, not Pittsburgh exactly, but Westmoreland County to Irwin, PA because there was coal mines there owned by Henry Clay Frick. It was, it was uh, uh, Frick Coal and Coke. All right, so if we landed in Irwin, how did we eventually end up like inside of Pittsburgh? Okay, I'll be happy to tell you. Um, Richard Murphy was the original immigrant, and he had a son named Michael Murphy, who was my, grand who was my grandfather, and when he came of age, we'll say in the 1890s or so, uh, he didn't like the idea of working in the coal mine uh, due to the peril and, and the prampness and the uh, difficulty of it. So the only other industry in town was the Pennsylvania Railroad. So he was interested in becoming a trainman. So that's what he did. And, and in order to do, pursue that career, he had to commute. He, and he left or went to the big city of Pittsburgh. So, and he roomed for a while as a boarder and uh, eventually he was a fireman on a, on, a, on a railroad and eventually became an engineer. Uh, he was an engineer on what they called the Pittsburgh Division, which was from Pittsburgh to Altoona, around the curve. So he knew all that track. And uh, he also married in 1904, and he and his wife went on to have five children, one of them would become my dad, William Murphy. And uh, they eventually built a house in Garfield, part of the section mm -hmm. of Pittsburgh. And then now we presently live in Bloomfield. All right, then. Sounds good. Thank you. Following to listening to my dad's story about my family's immigration, the push factors I identified in why my family left Ireland was that my great-great-grandfather was tired of Britain's rule over Ireland, and he just didn't want to deal with all that was going down around the 1860s. A pull factor I observed was that he wanted a new life in the Americas. This also leads into how he came to Irwin to specifically work in the coal mines. So the pull factor, uh, inclusion of the push factor, was that he didn't like British control over Ireland, so he left. And the pull factor was that he came to America for a better life. And then he eventually came to Pittsburgh for the jobs in the coal mines. And the railroads. When my great-great-grandfather um, migrated to the Americas, there is not to be, there's not any known intervening opportunities that he had, but an example of an intervening opportunity was my great-grandfather, not my great-great. He did not like the coal mines, so he took the other opportunity that was around Pittsburgh in the railroads, and that is when he moved away from Irwin and moved into the Strip District to work as a person on the railroad. When my great-great-grandfather left Ireland, uh, he was a farmer, and he honest, I don't think he was that much, like he had a job and he was getting by, but he came to America on his own accord because he wanted a better life and just an overall like, as his family grew up, for them to have this life that he would want them to live. So his migration was mostly voluntary due to his status being mostly stable prior to leaving Ireland. In my family's migration, I think distance decay is both present and not present. Because I think it is present as when my great-great-grandfather came over... He had to adapt to the industrialized economy of America and 
stray away from the farming and agriculture that mostly dominated Ireland. But I also think that it was not present as when he left, many other people from Ireland were also leaving, which left a lot of people with the same culture coming to around the same place. So he most likely met friends and had friends that like when they'd meet together, maybe they'd follow the same customs and cultures that the Irish people would have. In my father's migration, um, step migration was prevalent as step migration is when uh, a person moves from, say, a place like a rural place like Ireland. And they move not exactly to a city, but a place like around a city to like more adjust to the new environment before going straight into the big city. And that was that happened in my family's migration as. My great-great-grandfather moved from a farming area in Ireland to a suburb around an up-and-coming place like Pittsburgh. Chain migration was prevalent in my family's migration, but it, on a broad spectrum, but not on an exact spectrum. As my great-great-grandfather came over to America when many other people from Ireland were coming to America... So he followed suit, like followed the chain. But he also, we also never had an exact example. Like my dad couldn't come up with one of like him following, say, his friend to America. Because he knew he left, so he was going to leave like with him. So there was no exact example, but he did follow a chain as many people were leaving Ireland at the same time. In my family's migration, I would say the Gravity Mall does apply as my great great grandfather moved from a bit a smaller area to an up and coming bigger area like Pittsburgh, even though Pittsburgh wasn't that big of a place compared to New York, it was still bigger, so the gravity model would apply. Also, there are no signs of remittances in my family's immigration story.